Hi everyone, I'm Pranav Chashra, Senior Product Manager for AWS Local Zones. I also have Wayne Carter, VP of Engineering for Couchbase, joining us for the webinar. Thank you for joining us to learn about Local Zones and how they enable developers to run applications that need single-digit millisecond latencies closer to end users across the US. In today's session, I'll describe what AWS Local Zones are, why we build them, and which locations can developers use them. Next, we'll discuss how developers are already using local zones, and then Wayne will dive into how Couchbase is using local zones specifically and the improvements they've seen in latency performance. And finally, we'll explain the developer experience and end the session with a QA. So, first, let's discuss key components of AWS infrastructure and where do local zones fit in. If you look at our infrastructure, it spans across 80 availability zones and 25 geographical regions around the world today. And we have announced plans of for 18 more AZs and six more regions in Australia, India, Indonesia, Spain, UAE, and Switzerland. At AWS, every region consists of multiple availability zones, typically three or more, each of which is a fully isolated partition of the infrastructure that consists of discrete data centers. And all these regions provide full redundancy and connectivity to the network. If you look at 14 years so far, Amazon Web Services has been the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. So why did we launch AWS Local Zones despite having 25 regions across the world? And the answer lies in developers' expectations. Developers have told us that they have a significant number of applications that they want to run in the AWS cloud across the world. And the vast majority of developers get the necessary performance for the application in public regions. However, for some of the more latent sensitive and throughput intensive workloads like remote real time gaming, machine learning inference, and hybrid migration, customers want AWS closer to their end users on premises. These latent sensitive workloads have traditionally required customers to procure, operate, and maintain IT infrastructure either in their own data center or co location facility, which typically adds to cost and operational complexity. Customers have also told us that they had to run and build these low latency application components with a different set of APIs and tools than the other parts of the applications running in AWS. And that's why, based on your feedback, we launched different AWS Edge offerings, including AWS Outpost, AWS Local Zones, and AWS Favorant. Let's discuss them briefly. AWS Outpost is a fully managed service that extends AWS infrastructure to virtually any data center or on-premises facility for a truly consistent hybrid experience. It is designed for workloads that need to remain on-premises due to latency requirements. However, not every customer wants to operate their own on-premises data center. In fact, there are other customers who are interested in getting rid of their data centers entirely. And that's where local zones come into picture. Local zones allow such customers to gain all the benefits of having compute and storage resources closer to end users without the need to operate their own data center. On the other hand, Wavelength is designed to deliver ultra low latency applications to 5G devices by extending AWS to 5G networks. Specifically, Wavelength embeds storage and compute inside telco providers 5G networks, which help developers build new applications for 5G end users. And all of the three edge offerings bring AWS services to more places with the same experience and benefits that developers are used to today. So how does AWS Local Zones work? Let's take an example of our US West Oregon region. We know that the latency of applications deployed to the region depends on where end users are and where the region is, and the specific part travels from end users to reach the applications in the region. And typically, the latency in regions is in the order of tens of milliseconds if you look across a broad population of end users. What AWS Local Zones does is that it brings AWS services to edge in metropolitan areas, which minimizes the latency required to connect to end users. Logically, you can think of AWS local zones as very similar to availability zones in the region. It's just that the local zones are not physically co-located with the region, 
and instead they lie in a different physical geography. So for example, in the case of LA local zone, what we've done here is that we've extended US West Oregon region into the LA metro area by building two local zones in LA. And since the network power travels is shorter from end users in the Southern California area, two LA local zones, the latency is lower and predictable, which is essential for low latency applications such as gaming and hybrid migration. So now that you have understood edge offerings and local zones briefly, let's discuss more details about AWS local zones. First of all, AWS local zones are managed and supported by AWS, meaning customers no longer need to incur the expense or effort of procuring, operating, and maintaining data centers in various cities to support single digit millisecond latency applications. Secondly, applications in Local zone can use the core services available locally, such as Amazon EC2, Amazon EBS, Amazon ECS, and EKS. And local zones provide customers with a high bandwidth secure connection between their local workloads and those running in the parent region. This gives customers the ability to use the same AWS APIs and tools to run latent sensitive workloads locally while seamlessly connecting to full range of services back in the parent region. And finally, local zones deliver consistent experience across the US, allowing developers to build applications using the same and familiar AWS services, APIs, tools, and functionality that developers are used to today in regions. So now the next question is, where are these local zones located? Under last years, developers could use local zones in LA for end users located in the Southern California region. However, developers outside of Southern California also want this capability for end use across the US. So we prioritize 15 additional locations for local zones based on inputs and latency coverage needs. And last month, we made three of these 15 new local zones generally available in Houston, Boston, and Miami. We're also launching 12 more local zones throughout 2021, covering cities like Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, and New York. With these new local zones, customers will be able to deliver single digit millisecond latency experience to end users across the continental US. Now that we have discussed why we build local zones and their presence in the US, let's discuss how customers are using these local zones. Local zones can be used for highly demanding use cases that require single digit millisecond latencies to end users or to on-premises. Broadly, these use cases can be grouped into two categories. The first one is distributed edge, which includes customers like Supercell and Ubitus in the gaming vertical and other social media companies who want to place select part of their applications in multiple locations around the world to reach their end users with low latency. The second category includes locality-based use cases where customers like MindBody and Netflix need access to cloud services in specific locations that are in close proximity to their existing offices, data centers, and so forth. Now that you understand use cases broadly, let's discuss some of these top use cases in detail. The first important distributed edge use case is real-time multiplayer gaming where gaming companies like Supercell and Ubitus deploy game servers for multiplayer gaming sessions worldwide to be closer to gamers. A latency of 20 to 30 milliseconds or less is considered ideal for a good gameplay experience. And until now, these customers are using on-premise installations in various metropolitan areas to supplement AWS presence. However, now these customers can deploy latent sensitive game servers in local zones to run real-time and interactive multiplayer gaming sessions, enabling them to provide end users across the world with a great experience. Next, we have m and &E customers like Netflix who are migrating expensive artist workstations to local zones in specific metro areas like LA. For artist workstations, latency is the key to having a jitter-free experience on a remote instance. And these customers typically require less than five millisecond latency from their offices or animation hubs to virtual instances. And with Direct Connect, most of our local customers, for example, in the LA metro area, are able to achieve as low as one to two millisecond latency 
from the animation hub to the LA local zone and run latent sensitive workloads like live production and video editing closer to artists. The third important use case is enterprise migration, which we classify as locality-based use case. Enterprises like MindBody have workloads running in their existing on-premises data centers in different metropolitan areas. Such customers have told us that it can be daunting to migrate a portfolio of interdependent applications to the cloud. And now with Direct Connect to the local zone, customers can establish a hybrid environment that provides ultra low latency communication between applications running in the local zone and on-premises installations. In turn, this enables customers to migrate applications incrementally, simplifying migrations drastically and enabling ongoing hybrid deployments. And finally, there are other distributed edge use cases like machine learning inference, where customers have to gather, process, and analyze data from millions of smart devices. For such use cases, network latency impacts the ability to provide end users with real-time insights and recommendations. An ever-increasing complexity of customer insurance queries need more time for the computation and responses. Now with local zones, these customers are able to deploy insurance and search servers in local zones in cities across the US and achieve a single digit millisecond latency experience, which results in much faster insights and recommendation systems. Another example of distributed edge use case is how Couchbase is using local zone. Couchbase is leveraging local zones to extend AWS infrastructure across the US and provide low latency, single digit millisecond latency experience for applications, ensuring developers apps are always available and fast. To tell you more, let me introduce Wayne Carter, Vice President of Engineering for Couchbase. Wayne. Thank you. Um, great to be here and um, excited to talk about the work that we're doing using um, local zones. Before I uh, get started on the uh, test that we've run using local zones. Let me tell you a little bit about Couchbase for those of you that aren't already familiar with us. So Couchbase is a NoSQL database company. Our database technology delivers unmatched flexibility, performance, and scale across clouds, uh, on-premise, and at the edge. We have, at the highest level, we have two database types. So we have the first is Couchbase server. It's a highly scalable distributed database that runs uh, in the cloud or at the near edge. Um, the second is Couchbase Lite, which is our embedded database that runs on edge devices, including phones, tablets, IoT, embedded systems, and also um, small form factor uh, embedded server environments. Um, and if you consider how Couchbase is different than other modern databases, there are three key areas of differentiation. And this includes um, our uh, versatility and flexibility for developers. That includes uh, support for key value, SQL queries, uh, full text search, and analytical queries in both of our databases. Um, in addition, we have built-in data synchronization between Couchbase server instances, um, Couchbase server and Couchbase Lite, um, and peer-to-peer -peer between Couchbase Lite um, instances. And we also offer predictable uh, performance at scale. This is one of the key um, uh, value propositions of our database is that we use underlying adaptive indexes and, and um, other indexing technology, uh, replication and redundancy to guarantee performance at the sub-millisecond level um, and to guarantee availability. And then we focus heavily on ease of management um, so that when you do finally distribute our database in your production environments, they're easy to maintain and um, upgrade over time. So this is an architectural, a high level architectural diagram of how our uh, database components fit into an edge computing architecture. So at the top, you have a cloud environment. So imagine this as your, uh, your data center in um, your cloud environment. And at the core of that is the Couchbase server database with those key value queries, search, analytics, um, and other features of the database right there in the cloud. 
On top of that is the Couchbase Gateway, which I didn't mention before, but this is a, a, a very key component that allows you to surface the Couchbase server database to the internet. So it allows you to um, do both uh, CRUD, uh, sync, and security directly over the web. Um, this is very different than normal da uh, typical database servers that you wouldn't want to expose to the, to the um, internet. Um, as we move down in the architecture, um, I'll stop in the middle there at the near edge, which is in the um, multi-access edge computing data center, since we're talking about edge computing today. Um, in that area of the, of the architecture, you can deploy either Couchbase Server and Sync Gateway, or you can do, um, uh, deploy our embedded database, Couchbase Lite. And it really depends on um, your performance and concurrency and uh, compute um, requirements, which one of those that you'll deploy, or you can deploy them um, together if that, if that meets your needs. Um, and then if you move all the way down to the bottom where we're looking at the actual edge devices, and this is phones, tablets, laptops, um, uh, embedded systems, IoT, we have our embedded database that includes that same key value, SQL query, search, analytics, authentic security, and synchronization. And then you'll notice that there's a few additional um, uh, networking paths uh, in this diagram. So at the very top, you have the internet. This is uh, uh, you know what's front ending your cloud environment down at the edge you have um, networking paths either go via local area network which would be like for on-prem but for the for the for the purposes of this conversation you're going to be going over isp um, and uh, of course we also support over 5g and then at the very bottom you'll see the private area network and that's where we do communication over peer-to-peer -peer for synchronization of couch based light instances so full coverage of the edge computing architecture um, stack with database technology that's very flexible for deploying um, in this environment for your uh, business and um, computing needs. So in this um, test scenario, a lot of our customers, we've been, we've been um, in the market selling this technology since uh, 2013. Um, a lot of our customers deploy edge computing environments that they primarily deploy on premise. And as edge computing um, offerings are starting to emerge from cloud providers, uh, they're looking for additional options for getting the um, benefits of edge computing. So the speed and availability and, and throughput uh, characteristics that that edge computing um, provides without the need to manage the full compute, compute environment on premise. So you have all of this value that comes from edge computing, but it also comes with the higher operational complexity and operational costs of uh, managing distributed environments. So as we're looking at these new capabilities and our customers come to us to advise them on what options they have for managing these deployments, um, local zones was one of the, the the key services that have that are coming up, and so we set out to run a series of tests to qualify the performance characteristics of these um, these environments, and uh, was run in our engineering department. I mean, it was intended to measure the the difference in overall response times when accessing a web service backed by a couch-based database and deployed in parallel um, in an AWS availability zone and an AWS local zone. And then we access those two environments during the test over a wired ISP. Um, the environment was web service, as I, as I pointed, um, on top of Couchbase. We were sending get and set requests over HTTP to an AWS availability zone. So this web service was running there and the local zone in 100 iterations. We ran a, a large portion of tests, but each one of the tests were run in 100 iterations, capturing timing metrics for each of these executions. And we were using payloads at 1,000 bytes. So relatively large um, records. For test measurement, we measured total time on the server to process the request. Um, so this was started as the request comes into the server. We then measured um, internally to the web service, we uh, measured database time on the server, which was measured 
before the request was sent out to the database and after all of the response was received from the database. And we also measured total round trip from the client to the server and back. Um, then we were able to derive four metrics from that. Request duration, so the total time of the entire round trip. Um, network duration, which we use request duration and subtracted out server duration to determine network duration. We also were able to, uh, due to the measurement, determine server duration and database duration. And then we use the KPI of median network duration to, um, to, um, uh, to interpret this data and use that to advise our customers on the, um, the capabilities. So this is a quick view of the high-level architecture um, that I just described. So we had we used um, we did all of our tests in the West. Um, so we used the availability zone US West 2A, and we used the AWS local zone US West 2 LAX 1A. Um, both of them were set up in an identical manner um, with Couchbase running in each uh, uh, zone and the web service running in that same zone. Then we used a desktop uh, that accessed the network over a wired ISP, um, accessing both of these web services in parallel and capturing the metrics that I described. Okay, so this is the raw test results from our test. So in the top left, you'll see network duration. In the top right, you'll see request duration. On the bottom left, you see server duration. And the bottom right, you see the database duration. These are the, the metrics that I talked about before. So um, if you look at network duration um, in the top uh, table there on the right, the availability zone, the AWS availability zone delivered um, on the get side, delivered 88 milliseconds median duration. And on the set side, it was 30 milliseconds of um, duration. On the local zone, there was a approximately, it's close to 80%, but 79% decrease in uh, latency for the get, so down to 18 milliseconds from 88. And on the set side, uh, 6.7 6 milliseconds compared to the 30 milliseconds. So quite a large um, decrease in, um, in uh, latency there. If we look at where the rest of the time goes, that's where most of the time goes if you look at these other numbers. So um, on the available, if we go down to the next one, it's going to be the median request duration. So close to, so 89 milliseconds compared to the 88 milliseconds that are on the network. So you can see that most of the time is going into the network um, versus some client processing time. Um, 31 milliseconds uh, for the set compared to the 30.9 milliseconds on the set in the availability zone. And you get similar kind of clustering of, um, of request time to network time on the, on the local zone side. So 18.8 uh, milliseconds um, for get compared to 18.5 and then um, so 7.3 milliseconds compared to, to uh, 6.7. Um, moving down, you can see that the server time and the database time was a very small portion of the actual um, execution time. So these, our databases are known for, for how fast they are. So um, that's uh, not, not surprising. So down in the, what do we have here? The availability zone was 279 um, microseconds. Uh, the set was 533 microseconds. The local zone in comparison was uh, you know, very, very close, uh, 255 um, microseconds and um, 524 on the set. And then the database time, even smaller portions of that. So, um, and again, very, very close together. So the availability zones and the local zones from a compute perspective and environment perspective um, operate very, very similarly to each other. I would just say they're identical uh, looking at these numbers. Um, but uh, the database duration time being uh, so what, 270, 270 microseconds, 245 microseconds down the local zone, and then 414 microseconds in the availability zone and 200, 412 microseconds on the local zone. So again, uh, very, very similar performance. I would just call these identical. 
So from here, I'll focus on uh, just a little bit more detail on the network duration since that's where we actually got the gain. And so um, comparing the two, significant decrease in, um, in latency between running compute resources on top of a database in um, the AWS region versus the AWS local zone. So, uh, you know, seventy-nine percent decrease on the read side, seventy-eight percent decrease on the on the um, write side. So, massive, massive um, decrease in uh, latency and um, a big uh, a big win from a from my uh, test perspective. So a lot of Couchbase customers um, come from a variety of industries and includes uh, retail, hospitality, healthcare, logistics, travel, and many more. And I'll just talk about a few of those here today. So with large retail stores, hotel properties, and restaurant chains, you can provide a premium personalized services for your customers and employees, um, allowing them to gain uh, subsequent millisecond response times for their mobilized environments and their point of sale systems and their help systems with high availability. On the healthcare side, you can locally process patient information in real time, improving uh, evaluation, diagnostics, treatment, and quality of care. Um, the ability for your customers to receive that and the ability for your employees to deliver that. On the factory side, you can monitor, collect, and analyze alerts from equipment locally in real time, provide predictive analytics, um, predictive analysis, preventative maintenance, right there inside of your factories, regardless of internet connectivity or speed. So that's what we did with um, the AWS local zones. We were really impressed with the, um, the decrease in latency that we were uh, able to achieve and we're excited to see um, uh, how our customers use this going forward. And if you want to check out our edge computing solutions, you can go to couchbase.com and then check out our solutions page for edge computing, where we talk more about um, the details on how to have this happen and the other offerings we have um, for deploying this on premise or deploying it in the Couchbase cloud or deploying it in the Amazon cloud environments. Thanks, Wayne. Now that we've reviewed use cases of local zones, we want to get you started using these. So let's dive into the developer experience. From the perspective of services, we locally support select services in AWS local zones. For example, we launched our first local zone in LA with support for Nitro-based Amazon EC2 instances, EBS volume, Amazon VPC, Amazon application load balancer, Amazon FSx for Windows and Luster, and Amazon Direct Connect. And since launch, we've added support for Amazon RDS, EMR, Elastic Cash, ECS, and EKS. And further adding more services based on your feedback. While we support set of local services across local zones, some of services vary based on the location. You can visit features page on our webpage for a full list of support services by locations. In three new local zones in Boston, Miami, and Houston specifically, we're starting with five core compute and network services, including Amazon EC2, EBS Volume, Amazon ECS, EKS, and VPC. Over time, we plan to add additional services, including AWS iConnect and more EC2 instances in these new local zones. Apart from local services, all AWS tools work in these local zones as well. API calls are automatically logged via CloudTrail, and you can continue to use familiar and powerful AWS services like CloudFormation, identity, identity and access management, and auto-scaling to manage, secure, and scale your applications in local zones. And you can access AWS services such as DynamoDB, S3, and others in the parent region in the same way as you do in regions today. So how to get started? Um, AWS local zones are accessible from the API endpoint and the console of their parent region. 
To get started, you first need to enable the local zones for your AWS account before you can start deploying resources to them. And you can do that from the zone settings section of the EC2 console as shown here. Once enabled, local zones look and behave similarly to any other AZ, and you can access local zones through the parent regions console and API endpoints. The image here shows the LA local zone, which is visible as US West 2, LX1A, along with other AZs in the EC2 console. US West 2 in the name tells you the parent region, and LX tells you that it is an extension of US West 2 region and physically lie in the LA metro area. So let's look at some of the concepts of local zones that we can see from the described availability zone API. The zone name US West 2 LX1A can be passed into APIs like create subnet, just like any other AZ. And the group name US West 2 LX1 is used to refer to group of local zones for a particular metro area. The group here includes two LA local zones, both of which are the extensions of Oregon region. You can also see the network border group US West 2 LX1, which is used to allocate IP addresses that can be used with EC2 instances in local zones for local internet connectivity. Applications built on local zones start with a VPC, just like you use for applications on AWS today. Once the local zone is enabled, you can extend your existing VPC from the parent region to a local zone by creating a new VPC subnet assigned to the local zone. Let's look at an example architecture here. In this example, you can see VPC and subnets linked to availability zones in the US West Oregon region. Here, you can extend the VPC from the parent region US West Oregon into the LA local zone by creating a new subnet and assigning it to the LA local zone. And when you create a subnet in the local zone, the VPC is extended to that local zone and a VPC will treat the subnet as any other subnet in AZs and relevant gateways and route tables will automatically get adjusted. AWS local zones have their own connection to the internet and select locations also support AWS Direct Connect. So resources created in local zone can serve local end users or on-premises installations with a very low latency communications. Once a VPC subnet is established for the local zone, you can simply select the subnet while creating local resources. For example, here, you can launch an EC2 instance in the LA local zone by selecting the local subnet. Similarly, you can launch EBS volumes by selecting LA local zone in the EBS console, just like any other AV. And then local resources are ready within seconds. You can manage these resources in local zones, just like resources in, in regions. For example, here you can see the instance that I launched in US West 2 LX1A, which is the LA local zone. Local zones can be used to further improve high availability for applications while maintaining ultra low latency. One scenario is for enterprise migrations using a hybrid architecture. These enterprises have workloads that currently run in existing on premises data centers in the metro area. And it can be daunting to migrate these application portfolios together to the cloud. And by utilizing AWS Direct Connect in conjunction with a local zone, customers can establish a hybrid environment that provides ultra low latency communications between applications running in the local zone and the on premises installations without customers needing a potential expensive revamp of their architecture. And as time progresses, the on-premises applications can be migrated to the cloud in an incremental fashion, simplifying the overall migration process. The diagram here illustrates this type, of, this type of enterprise migration. Here, customers can partition their workloads between two local zones in the LA metro area to achieve higher availability, similar to how they partition their workloads between two AZs in the region today. Let me bring Wayne back to briefly explain how Couchbase is leveraging multiple local zones for high availability databases. 
So one of the major values that our customers come to us for is our ability to support high availability. And just to kind of show the simplicity of it here, um, layered on top of this diagram, the way you would deploy the Couchbase databases is um, as you would expect. So you deploy the database into the EC2 instance in the private subnet, um, allowing our synchronization technology to keep those databases in sync as databases as the data changes um, throughout the system. And you could further deploy our database down in the on-premise installations um, if your uh, use cases require that, also up in the cloud um, for centralized uh, access and, um, and management. Thanks, Wayne. And finally, from a pricing perspective, instances and other AWS resources running in local zone have their own prices that might differ from the parent region. Billing reports include a billing prefix, for example, LX1, or the location name US West Los Angeles that is specific to the group of local zones in a metro area. EC2 instances in local zones are available in either on demand or spot form, and you can also purchase savings plans as well. For pricing information, you can visit the pricing section of the respective services and filter pricing information by choosing the local zone in the dropdown. The dead browser charges in local zones are the same as in the AZs in the parent region today. For example, dead transfer between Amazon EC2 in the local zone and Amazon S3 in the parent region is free. Similarly, dead transfer in and out from Amazon EC2 in the local zone to the Amazon EC2 in the parent region is charged at one cent per GB in each direction. Now that we explained how to enable local zones and provision applications in AWS local zones, please go ahead and try these new local zones. As always, we're listening for your feedback and, and working on adding local zones in other locations along with availability of additional services. If you are an AWS customer with the requirement for very low latency for your workloads anywhere in the US, then we invite you to check out the new local zones. Thank you again for joining the session today. I'm Pranav Chastra, Senior Product Manager for AWS Local Zones. Please check us out on aws.amazon.com to learn more about local zones and try them out. Thank you.